What's up, everybody? So today I'm going to be talking about a stock that I am doing the wheel strategy on. Okay, so a wheel strategy is an option strategy that can make you a lot of money if you know how to use it well and if you know what companies to do it on. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to teach you how to do the wheel strategy. But more importantly, I'm going to be talking about the stock that I'm doing the wheel strategy on. Okay, so I think that's really important to pick the right stock because a lot of times there's a lot of great companies, but it may not be good for selling put options or running the wheel. So, but this stock Fubo is one of my favorite stocks right now to do the wheel strategy on. Okay, so let me try and build a case and begin by telling you about Fubo. Okay, so if you have not heard of Fubo, Fubo TV is a TV streaming company. Okay, so it live streams sports, it streams uh, different television shows, uh, it's much more than Netflix, okay? So it's almost like cable TV, but so much more. It even has gambling for sports, okay? So I know some people may be against gambling, but sports gambling is a huge thing, and that's one of the ways that Fubo is making money, okay? So as you can see, if you go on Fubo TV, you'll see that there's 280 channels available in my zip code. There's ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC, Sportsnet, and just a lot of channels. So, so, so basically, if you have cable, and if you're paying for cable, you would know that all these channels are probably what you have. Except right now, I think cable, I think generally speaking, is around $120, uh, maybe cheaper in some areas, or some, maybe cheaper for you. But I think on average, I heard people pay between $80 and $120. Okay, so... Uh, Fubo is right around that ballpark range. If you get the pro version, it's only $70 a month. You get 135 channels. You get over 100 sporting events. Okay, so that basically covers probably every sport that most people watch. You know, you name it, basketball, football, baseball, dance, whatever sport that you're into, right? And, of course, there's other channels uh, that some people may prefer that may not be very, very popular, and that's why they have the elite version, the ultimate version, and even the Latino version. If you are just wanting to watch Latino channels, it's a lot cheaper. Okay, so basically, in a nutshell, Fubo is a live streaming sports and TV channel company, okay? And they offer subscriptions to where, you know, you basically can pay for a month, or so, sorry, where you pay monthly, and you basically have access to uh, Fubo on all your platforms. Okay, so TV, if you have 10 TVs, they allow you access for that. Okay, so take a quick look at the company as a whole. Let's just take a look at what's going on. Fubo TV grew its subscriber count in North America by 41% year over year in the second quarter. Okay, so... However, one of the big reasons why Fubo is down so much, and if you take a look at the one-year chart, is down by, you know, it, it was trading at $22 at one point, guys. Fubo, at its peak in November of 2021, was trading at $25, $30, even $33, okay? And right now, it's trading at about $5, okay? It went down all the way to $2.37, and now it's at about $5, okay? So... Fubo is not profitable. That's really, really important to know. Uh, you know, Netflix or similar companies like, like Netflix is profitable. But the big difference right now between Fubo and Netflix is that Fubo, of course, besides doing live streaming and, and all that, you know, Fubo is definitely considered a high growth company. So there's a lot more potential. Netflix is one of the companies that has reached profitability. But at the same time, there's not as much room for the stock to grow, right? So we, I don't foresee Netflix tripling or quadrupling in the next couple of years. But Fubo is actually a stock that I can totally see go back twenty-five dollars or even thirty plus dollars uh, once this uh, this market begins to recover. Okay, so uh, you know, I did mention that Fubo TV lowered its quarter, lowered its two thousand twenty-two subscriber outlook. But guys, honestly. Most companies that are very similar to Fubo, like Roku and Netflix, has are in the same boat, right? Like, they've definitely lowered their subscriber outlook for this year. And that's just because of the macroeconomics, right? Everybody is not doing well. The, the inflation rate right now is really, really high. And, you know, there's, there's a lot of un unemployment. And right now, the economy is just not in 
pristine condition. Okay, so it did say though that Fubo TV reported a 70 increase in revenues in the second quarter, so $221 million. Most of the customers for Fubo are in North America, so that's really important to know. Uh, you know, it has not expanded yet into outside territories, but nonetheless, just in North America alone, they have 947,000 subscribers, which is pretty good. A 41% growth rate year after year, which is outstanding. So basically almost a million subscribers. And, you know, the subscriber growth is said to be stronger uh, in the rest of the world than in North America. So that means that outside of North America, the, the company is actually growing a lot. Okay, so, and, and that makes it even more interesting because... Ultimately, right, if right now 97% of their customers are in North America, but their international business is expanding like crazy, like 347,000 subscribers, that's 130% year growth year over year, okay? And even though the re revenue for international market is smaller, guys, I'm just happy that they're expanding internationally. That means that there's at least a prospect of Fubo TV growing massively, okay? So... Uh, they have ad revenues, okay, so that's that's one thing that's really important to note. Their ad revenues increased 32% year over year to $21 million. I don't even think Netflix has ad revenue, right? And correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe Netflix has that kind of revenue. And so uh, I think that's great because when you have different sources of revenue, that's definitely something that is important for a company. Okay, so like I said from the very beginning, Fubo TV is not profitable yet. So that's the biggest difference between Fubo and Netflix is Netflix, after so many years, is finally profitable and Fubo TV is not yet profitable. They made a loss of $116 million despite the massive growth they've experienced. Okay, and, and even though it is slowing down, guys, ultimately this company is still growing. Um, and the reason why the stock has just been obliterated it's because every stock in this industry has been obliterated. I would say most stocks, most stocks across the board on every industry, except maybe like oil and gas, has been obliterated this year, right? And Fuo TV, it was just one of those small companies that was considered a high growth company. Unfortunately, because of the macroeconomics, you know, just the stock went down like all the others. But, you know, I, I do think and I agree with this article that Fubo TV is definitely undervalued. We're expecting to see $101.25 billion in 2023. So that's a lot. That's a massive market cap. Right now, Fubo TV shares are selling at 0.5 times the estimated revenues in 2023. That is really, really cheap. Uh, if we take a look at Netflix, right now, Netflix is trading at five times the valuation of the revenues. Okay, so... And then talks about some risk and uh, some final thoughts. Uh, I want to show you this comparison of Roku to Fubo. Okay, so Roku is probably, in my opinion, one of the closest competitors to Fubo just because, you know, they also do live streaming. And uh, Roku is definitely a company that is significantly larger. Uh, it's one that Kathy Wood has uh, a pretty significant position on. And look at this, right? Year to date, both stocks are down. Roku lost about 49%. Fubo is down about 64%. Okay, so they also, they both offer TV streaming, uh, various media content. And uh, yeah, so that, that's really, really important to know. At the end of 2021, Fubo had about 1.13 million total subscribers. And the company has increased quite a bit. And this is what I wanted to get into. Okay, so forward sales. Roku is trading at currently a forward sales of 3.61 times the sales as opposed to Fubo, who is trading at 0.75 times the forward sales. Okay, so what Fubo is projecting in terms of revenue, right? Their their stock right now is trading at 0.75 times that, and which I think is very, very cheap, and that's the reason why I'm so bullish on Fubo. You know, like, this, this article was written when the $12 footy put was a good idea, and uh, obviously it's down a lot more now, so that's why I think it's a great entry. Um, but there's just different reasons why I, I really think Fubo is a company that has significant growth uh, prospects in the long term and is a stock that is worth definitely over $10. Okay, so now, that being said, you know I want to go into my Robinhood account and show you how this wheel strategy works. And as you can see, I've already opened up a... 
uh, position doing the wheel on Fubo. I've actually opened more positions in my other brokerage account. Uh, I'm using Robinhood just as more of my play account. And so if you take a look at Robinhood right now, you know, I have this position open, but I'm going to show you how it works. Okay, so with a wheel strategy, essentially you're collecting premium on the downside and the upside. So you're either getting the stock for a cheaper price, or if you own the shares of the stock, specifically 100 shares, then you can gain premium on the upside. Okay, so let's start with opening up a put contract. So I'm going to do two weeks out because I think two weeks, two weeks is a pretty good expiration that offers pretty good value. And so I'm going to sell the put option out to September 30th. Uh, I'm going to select the $5 shark price and I'm going to collect $52. Okay, so 52 cents per share at 100 shares. And if you take a look at this, I'm collecting $52 off of max collateral of $448. So guys, if you have $450 right now, you can collect $50 on Fubo, which is basically like 10 shares. And uh, basically what, how this works is that if the stock falls to, you know, four, uh, sorry, $5, then you'll, you, then you, if the stock falls to $5, then you could be assigned 100 shares at $5. But on top of that, you get paid $52. Okay, so you get paid $52 to open up this contract. And so you're basically getting 10 free shares plus a slight discount on the stock today. Okay, and the moment where you start to have unrealized losses is that the stock falls down to $4.48. Okay, so that just means that, you know, because with the premium that you collected, you know, uh, the moment where you, the value of your stocks that you're holding after you get signed goes below the price that you paid for is essentially $4.48. Okay, so let's say you get assigned, you know, 100 shares of Fubo at $5, right? So you collect the $52 and you, you have 100 shares now of Fubo. Okay, so what I would do after that is I would begin to sell covered calls. Okay, so you can simply hold on to the shares, but a lot of times when you have 100 shares, a good way to hedge your position against downside is to sell covered calls. And basically what that means is I'm gonna go to sell a call, and now I'm gonna go above the current price of the share. Okay, I'm gonna go above the current price of the stock. So I'm gonna sell it out to $6, and, and what that means is if the stock goes up to $6, then I will be forced to sell 100 shares of my Fubo stock, right? But if you take a look at this, right? Right now, Fubo is trading at $5.19. If I sell it at $6, I'm basically getting 80 cents per share profit, which is about $80. But I would also collect the, the call premium that I sold for. Okay, so in other words, I would collect this $33 for just selling the covered call. So that means in total, I would profit, I don't know, it's like $113 for executing this trade because I would gain the upside of the stock from you know $5.19 to $6 plus the premium that I collect from selling this covered call. So the reason why this strategy works so well is because you're collecting money on the downside or the upside. And if you get assigned the share, great, because you wouldn't mind owning that company. And you're really uh, just allowing yourself to collect premium, again, either the down on the downside or the upside. So whether the FUBO goes up or down, you're essentially making profit. And let's say you sell the put option and the stock goes up, right? You simply collect the premium, you never get assigned, and you continue doing the same thing over and over again. Right, so uh, that's basically how the wheel strategy works, and that's one of the ideas I have for Fubo stock. Uh, if I provided any kind of value for in this video, if you like this kind of content, make sure you hit the like button and comment below. Let me know what you think of Fubo stock. Let me know of what you think of this strategy for Fubo stock. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys around in the next video. With every star.